Hey, my soul friends. <laughs> it is Victoria, the soul nurturer. This is take three. I don't, I don't ever edit and redo, but for some reason I'm having some struggles getting this video done. I know because I'm time crunched. I only have a few minutes and have a lot to say. I'm going to try to condense it. First of all, happy new year. It is the astrological new year today, March 20th when the sun moved in to Aries. This, my friends, I hope you are feeling. I'm really curious. Um, please do comment if anything that resonates with you. And welcome to my channel, first of all. Thank you, I'm always honored by anyone who stops by and shares their precious time with me. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this really short. In fact, I only have 18 minutes left on my recorder, so it's gonna be really short. But what are you noticing? What are you feeling now that the sun is in Aries? It is the astrological new year. It is the time of the year when we connect to our the cycles of nature, uh, the celestial weather being that cyclical nature when, well, especially in the Northern hemisphere, I should say, but springtime, it is when, you know, new babies, animals are having their babies. Uh, new life is springing from the earth. It's like all the seeds we planted in the winter of our souls are starting to sprout. So I'm wondering how you're feeling. I know I woke with a, lo a lot of energy. In fact, I think <laughs> why I was having trouble doing the videos is I was just my, I was speaking so quickly and I, I it was too fast and I had to start over. <laughs> so it is like, here's what it feels like friends like we've been held behind the gate and the gate has opened so it's ready set go right but are you ready and here's the thing because aries wants to just jump forward right this is a time to really gather what you've learned and move forward with it a time to break free and break through Okay, so not only is it uh, Aries season, and by the way, happy birthday to you, my Aries friends out there. It's your solar return coming, a time that is empowered for you. I call that your personal new year, okay? So you've got the astrological new year and a personal new year as well. So this is a really powerful week. We have the spring equinox, and we have a new moon in Aries, the first new moon in Aries of the season. Yeah, we have two. When I feel into this energy, two new moons in Aries. New moons are a fresh start. It is, you know, time to set new intention, new goals, to really wipe the slate clean and start again. So two new moons, right? in Aries, and Aries is the bold initiator, the energy of trailblazing a path and a way forward. The gate has opened, it is time, ready or not. And here's the thing, I really wanna say, and this is a lesson I've had to learn, you don't have to be ready. You don't have to be perfect. There is no perfection. Perfection is an illusion that limits our possibilities, right? So just as it is springtime, I, 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 my wish for you is that you spring forward with all that you desire. So I want to talk a little bit more about, so we have the two new moons in Aries. I'm going to talk more about what Aries archetypal expression is, a little bit more about what what might be happening. I really want to focus just on the new moons because there's, you know, there's so many other little areas I can touch on. It's just a really powerful week. Pluto is moving out of Capricorn into Aquarius on Thursday, the 23rd for a short stay, then going back into Capricorn twice, I think. And, but it's, I think it's going to give us that feeling of, whew, you know, Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn has been rubbing our nose and things that have not been um, working structurally in our lives, in our worlds. Um, and Pluto is, you know, connected to Saturn, the taskmaster. And we've really been working hard to, to um, 
get our stuff together, right? And to really also we might have felt defeated or de depleted because there was so much to look at and so much to be with and so many obstacles to overcome. Anybody feel me on this? And if you resonate with anything I say, do comment. Um, I like to know when, when I'm connecting to someone out there. Comment where you're watching from and what your takeaways from this are and subscribe if you haven't. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I'm always honored by anyone who takes the time to visit with me. Okay, hopefully you'll, I'll say something that really sparks you and ignites your passion. And that's what the airy season is about. It is passion, it is empowered purpose, it is rising boldly to go forward towards all we desire. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say, so the spring equinox happening on March 20th and the new moon on March 21st. Then I did mention Pluto going into Aquarius. Then we have a full moon in Libra on April 5th. And then that second new moon is a full, a total solar eclipse in Aries. Welcome to new possibilities. Welcome to breakthroughs. Welcome to moving forward, taking action really um, not taking no for an answer, dusting yourself off from all the times you've fallen or felt um, like you were about to give up. No, it's time to rise up to emerge your potential. So this is the time, my friends. I, was, I just want to talk a little bit about the energy of Aries. And for you, my friends, Aries sun sign, um, or your moon in Aries, or rising in Aries, or your north node in Aries, you may relate to this. If I miss anything, definitely put it in the comments, something you really like about being in Aries, or something you struggle with being in Aries. So Aries is a cardinal sign. It is the first sign of the archetypal zodiacal cycle. It is the initiator. It is. It comes in strong with, you know, as a leader, as a trailblazer. It's associated with the color red. That's why I'm wearing red today instead of my springtime colors. It's bold. Red is bold, right? Um, the symbol is the ram. Really think about the ram and, and, and the energy there, persistence, and <laughs> we'll, we'll butt heads to get their point across, right? So we're going to talk about the energy of the empowered areas and the wounded areas. And I say the wounded areas instead of, or, or when I talk about signs, I say empowered or wounded or empowered or shadow, but really I think wounded speaks more to um, when we're in the energy of a sign and we're maybe not at our highest and our best, that's because somewhere we're not in our wholeness. There's a wound, there are wounds seeping our soul essence out. So, so an empowered Aries is, you know, again, they're the courageous, bold leaders. They are the initiators. They are the ones that want to step in and get it done, right? Um, they're really, I think, of heroic energy. You know, those who will get in with, with their courage into harm's way in order to help. They also are the risk takers, you know? So this is, so all that I'm talking about, like how it is personified in a person these are the qualities that we get to borrow during Aries season. And by the way, we all have Aries in our natal chart. It's in one of your houses. Uh, and so wherever this new moon is happening in your natal chart is where you're invited to this, this potential, uh, to this new beginning. It's an area in your, so for instance, it's in my second house, the house of money and resources and self-worth. So it is a restart, a new beginning in that area for me. And, and maybe if I have time, I'll go through the wheel of all the houses and what, what this new moon in Aries may be inviting you to. Okay, so think about though, um, let's see. Uh, well, let me, let me stay with, see, I'm just, my, my mind is racing. I just got so many thoughts coming. Okay, ah, take a breath, Victoria. Okay. <laughs> so some key things about Aries. First of all, um, the planet association associated with Aries is Mars. Yes, the planet of war. And maybe you know some Aries who can be hot-headed and like to fight. But really, 
they're fighting to try to get something done or move something forward. Or they're wounded and they're frustrated and they don't know how to move the intense energy that they feel. But the empowered Aries is the initiator, initiator, leader. They're, they are um, really wanting to bring something new into the world. Um, the wounded side of that could be aggression or um, Aries like to be first. And so they can be unconsciously competing with other people so that they're the best in the first. And hey, that's a helpful thing to be the best in the first. This is where innovative ideas are birthed from, right? So um, usually, you know, Aries can be really sharp with their tongues because um, they don't, they want to get to the point. <laughs> they want to get to the point. They want to get to where they want to get. So so where, now let's skip to where in your chart is this invitation to be bold, to activate some confidence needed to do what you're here to do. Across the board, you know, a new moon uh, is a time to set intentions, to really review what you've just come through and where you, maybe what the full moon showed you and what you need to initiate, what new actions do you need to take, what new um ways of being do you need to emerge in order to fulfill the potential and this is the time to spring forward with that potential this is the time to risk try be courageous you know be be willing to fight this is a proper use of the energy of mars through aries fight for a good cause but don't fight people fight against what is helping emerge a greater potential for you and all of us. So I'm running out of time because I only had a little bit of time on my video. So really quick, I'm going to try to do this. If this new moon, by the way, there's a lot of um, energy, uh, um, a stellium in Aries right now. So sun and moon conjunct, that's the new moon. We've got Mercury in Aries, uh, Jupiter and Chiron, which we've probably all been feeling. Jupiter and Chiron conjuncting in Aries has been stirring up our woundedness, expanding us uh, to see where we're wounded in order for us to cultivate and grow the gifts from our wounds. So there's a lot of Aries energy right now, but we have Venus in Taurus, which is grounding and rooting and helping us flow this energy in a direct way that um, empowers us and not disempowers anyone else. You That's the key with Aries energy. You want to empower yourself, but don't disempower someone else with this energy. Okay. So if Aries new moon is happening in your first house, you are invited to a new beginning in your with your identity to maybe something you've been hiding and holding back to step forward with and, and claim that. Say, this is who I am. This is what I'm here to do and take action on that. Second house, that's where it's landing for me. This is a way to um, take some bold a action with your resources, a new beginning, a fresh beginning with how you earn money and, and, and what you do to um, generate income and increase in self-worth. Third house is communication. Maybe you're being invited to have those difficult conversations, to step forward and express your unique voice. Uh, fourth house, maybe this is really initiating some new action in your home. Maybe you're going to do a remodel. Maybe you're moving. Um, but there's some activity there, some definitely energy in your in your fourth house of home and hearth. Fifth house is creativity, expression. Maybe this is, you're going to go, uh, the possibility here is you're going to go to a, um, what is it called? When you, not a talent show, what is it called? When you go and you, oh, and you sing or you, man, I don't mean to play charades right now, but I can't think of the words when you go. And um, not karaoke, and you get on stage. A talent show is the best thing I can come up with. And you share like a, a poetry slam, or or just getting up and singing in front of people, being bold with your creative expression, sharing something you've been developing, your artwork, whatever. That's fifth house. Um, if it's landing in your sixth house, taking some uh, new beginnings with health and service. Uh, maybe you you start a whole new health and fitness program and you've got a lot of energy to do it. Um, I would just say caution here. 
don't run walk towards those new health goals, okay? Because Aries energy, we can burn ourselves out quick, quickly and overdo it and pay for it later. So pace yourself. Seventh house, there's some energy with your relationships. Maybe you're going to be bold enough to ask that person out on a date or take your relationship to the next level. Um, it, I would also say, though, with Aries energy there, you, you're probably going to find want to find your independence in the relationship, your own voice in the relationship. Eighth house, um, handling, um, you know, it's, it's transformation. Maybe there's a lot more energy towards doing that deeper dive in your soul work. Um, it's also resources also connected to the eighth house is taxes. Perfect time to get your taxes done, right? If this is happening in your eighth house um, and helping others with their resources, you may be motivated to do that. Ninth house is higher education and travel. So you may be um, motivated to take that trip that you've been putting off to go on an adventure to learn a new language, to visit a foreign cult, um, country, or to sign up for that education that's going to take you to the next level. And even though this is specific to the ninth house, as I'm sharing the houses around the wheel, remember, we're all connected. So even if the new moon isn't in your ninth house or the sixth house or wherever I've touched on, I'm going to complete. If you felt resonance with that, trust that. You don't, you know, astrology is just a corresponding, uh, you know, symbolic system that helps us realign with our potential and purpose. And so if you hear something and you're like, well, no, my, my uh, sun and moon are not in my fifth house, transiting my fifth house, but that resonated with you, honor that. This is your free will. This is your soul expression. So if you feel like, well, I want to do that, it doesn't matter where the sun and moon are hitting in your chart. If you get a yes, go with it. Okay, where was I? So now 10th house, this is a focus on career and um, contributing. What are you meant to step forward into the spotlight of your life to share? In career focus, this is like being bold, ask for that raise being bold, maybe this is a time to make that shift or set an intention to find a career choice more aligned with your soul potential. 11th house is community and friends and our wishes and nonprofits and, and the future. So if this new moon is falling in your 11th house, this may be a time to reignite uh, your community connection uh, to, to perhaps put together something for a gathering for your community or to volunteer for a, new, a nonprofit or to launch a nonprofit idea that serves humanity. If this is happening in your 12th house, this is the house that is connected to Pisces. It is the house of uh, the unconscious, great mystery, the house of the mystic. Uh, I believe this is where, well, where we connect to the divine it's um, so taking some initiate some new action towards uh, spiritual practice, creating uh, a meditation, committing to a meditation practice, committing to spending time with yourself in nature and connecting to the divine, and really listening to the those soul calls that come through that quiet time. Okay. That was, I've never done that before. I don't know how that's going to land, but I'm running out of time. So let me know how you're doing.